everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, hey everybody, welcome back out to Giga Texas. It is Monday, the 12th of February, 2024, and there's a lot of uh, activity going on here and some pretty interesting new developments that we'll talk about here shortly. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you that uh, Starship is getting ready to launch. I'm not exactly sure when. It might be the end of February, might be early March. In any case, I'm going to go down there and on my trip down, I'm going to do everything I can. Hopefully Mother Nature will cooperate and get a new drone video of the Tesla lithium plant by Corpus Christi. So just giving you a heads up that that's coming in the next few weeks and my schedule will be changing. Now the biggest thing that I want to talk about today has to do over on the west side of the highway, several significant developments. First, as you can see by this image over by the old contractor parking lot that has now been cleared, they're doing excavation work that looks a lot like lighting. Maybe it'll be another section of this site that is paved and is used for parking or maybe for some logistics. The next big thing that is on the west side I want to talk about is on the south end of the end of line facility. As you can see, 64 superchargers have been in place. They are continuing to do their work to get these all assembled and eventually there will be a canopy over these. There is also trenching going on to the south of there, so it suggests that there may be more superchargers installed in that area. One of the biggest news items today has to do with the outbound lot on the west side. As you can tell by these series of images, it is now being used, and we've seen cars being lined up on the far west side, and also some in the middle. We also see the delivery trucks or the pickup trucks uh, for uh, the vehicles all being directed over to this side of the site today. And as you can tell by this image over on the east side, the old outbound lot that's been used for the last two years is virtually empty. In fact, the last bit of the cars were being loaded up and it looks like the trailers that were there were being prepared to be removed as well. In addition to that, the east side testing and calibration lot also looks empty and it looks like they're preparing to cease operations on the east side so that they can continue and build on the operations on the west side new end of line and outbound lot. The last item on the west side I want to talk about today has to do with the boring company tunneling. The crews were working on the aft end of the Proof Rock 3 today doing more assembly of equipment. The thrust ring has been installed and it looks like they're getting ready to install one more section onto that south end. Also nearby here just to the north we see another large delivery that's associated with the boring company tunneling system. This device is a large one also on a trailer and it's got a black tarp as well. So a lot of activity with the boring company. So without further ado Let's fly around the site. Let's see what else that we can see on this beautiful but windy day here at Giga Texas. As always, thank you very much for watching and I do appreciate all your support. Take care. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga, Texas. Beautiful day to fly here at Giga, Texas, although it is a little windy, but that doesn't slow down the progress. We're starting on the southwest corner here, the old contractor lot. This gives you a good view of the work that is going on here with trenching. Looks to be in a configuration similar to what we would expect with a lighting system, uh, but it'll be something I'll have to continue to monitor and see what happens. You can see the other cars on the farther southwest being stored, and then here are some of the steel items 
being temporarily staged. These are being used for the South End Building Extension Construction Project that is going on across the road. Now, all of these blue tarped items, I think, are part of another stamping press, and these are all being uh, kept here until the south end construction is ready for them to be installed. Also, the TKS paint systems that we see in all these white wrapped items, and then more superchargers on the left next to those uh, cyber planters that are kind of cordoning off some of the materials. The big news today is that the new west outbound lot is operational. We have this new trailer where some of the employees will uh, be uh, setting up shop. We see the number of vehicles that are starting to be put onto these sites and the trailer trucks picking up the vehicles and transporting them off site. Currently, I think that they are departing to the south over onto River Road and then up Farm to Market 973 up to the Taylor Railhead. You can see some more of the trucks and, of course, cyber trucks all being stationed here uh, next to this part. We can see that there's a fence that has now been installed separating the outbound lot and the uh, end of line facility. And then on the south end, the continued installation of the superchargers. These 64 are arranged where the canopy is uh, going to be built. We've seen the footings for those canopies installed in this section. But we also see more trenching on the left-hand side connected to that uh, those superchargers. So it suggests we may see a further expansion of that. On this side, we can see trenching with some of that red concrete for the conduit, more of those uh, concrete tunnel segments, and this new large delivery for the Boring Company's uh, tunnel machine on that trailer. Speaking of the Boring Company, this is where they've set up shop. They are installing the support equipment with that belt cassette for the spoils, the dirt that comes out of the tunnel. And then here we see crews working near that thrust ring that was installed the last couple of days. And then they have that kind of a sled that they're working on right now. The other parts of the Proof Rock 3 that we see next to that section under the black ca uh, canopies or the tarps will be installed onto that section. And then that allows it to slide through uh, that thrust ring as the boring operation continues. And a good view of that Proof Rock 3 as well. And here's a close-in view of some of the work on the aft end of the Proof Rock 3 going on right this uh, morning. And again, preparation to install the rest of the items and then start doing the boring tunneling. At the rate that they're going right now, I say we still have at least a week, maybe two, before that tunnel operation continues. As I pull away, is a good view of some of the trailers that are supporting this operation, some more of the equipment, and of course the belt cassette, the section with those concrete blocks, and some other items that are associated with the Boring Company uh, machine and operation here on this side. So let's uh, continue to fly back up towards the end of line facility. I want to show you a few more shots of the new outbound lot. And with the work going on for the lighting systems, you can see the mounts uh, being uh, poured with concrete. And we should start seeing the poles installed soon. On the west side of the end of line facility, we see the curb, the prepared surface, and there will be asphalt here very soon. On this portion of the outbound lot, it continues to be under construction, trenching for some of the lighting system, and of course, some of the vehicles, trailers, and equipment being stored here. Uh, we do see some of the curbs, and it gives you a good view of how this section will look once all of the paving is completed. On the north end of the end of line facility, we see some paving has uh, continued on the left hand side, and it's a good view down here of the operations going on right now. Some more curbing, and we're still waiting for the windows to be installed on that north end of the facility. So let's get ready to cross over the highway and resume the discussion on the other side. Here at the Model Y end of line, we see Many of the new ultra red and also that uh, gray, the two new colors that were introduced for the Model Ys being produced today. Next to the West Main entrance, crews are working on these three parallel concrete uh, stripes that were added. They kind of have, uh, uh, I don't know, beveled edges as well, uh, mimicking that trapezoidal section. 
So it looks like that's what it's going to be, at least for right now. This is the receiving doors that are getting rework on the threshold and also the load levelers. Looks like the reconfiguration work is just at the entrance of these receiving doors, and they may resemble the five to the center of the screen once they are completed. But uh, something to continue to monitor to see how they are reconfiguring these receiving doors. As we proceed further to the southwest, uh, more of the cyber trucks are being staged in this area, but it looks like we may not see these anymore here. They may be moving them all over to that west outbound lot and that new end of line soon. So uh, we'll have to see if uh, that is in fact the case. A lot of work going on here at these two temporary platforms, more materials uh, being lifted up by those uh, crane, that crane, and it looks like they were just wrapping up some operation there. Next to the southwest corner, we can see the footing work, the perimeter grade beam, and a lot more of the steel items. The second story of this part of the steel structure has been erected on that uh, angled corner, and more columns are being picked up right now and installed on this corner and making up that uh, second story as well. And you can see on the perimeter grade beam, those kind of small uh, rectangular dots along the top, those are the mounts for the glass. And it indicates that the two level glass, the glazed look of the entire building will continue all the way around the south end to that corner of the structure. Speaking of which, we see more of these uh, CDEC uh, wooden crates delivery with more of the glass panes and also more of the glass panes installed on this southeast corner. And this is a good view of how that looks today. As we fly up over the roof section, we'll come over to this corner of the original structure where they continue to build these tanks. And they are all five levels tall and more of the welding work is going on on the inside today. As we pan the drone down and towards this direction, we see the work going on for the footings. We did have some rain through the area in the last couple of days, so it's kind of set them back a little and they're having to deal with some of the mud that uh, uh, came out because of all the rain. The bottom right of the screen, you saw another cyber truck. That is where they are exiting the factory from their end of line and then maneuvering over towards the testing calibration lot and then over to that west outbound lot. We see more work with the crane to pick up steel items to assemble on that first uh, steel structure. And then this steel structure is continuing to grow uh, in this corner. And as we mentioned before, they are starting to add the second floor now. In addition to that, we see some of the floor decking materials being put onto the beam. So it looks like uh, they will be uh, fairly quickly starting to put in some of those decking materials for the second floor, even though this structure looks partially assembled at this point in time. This is a good view of how this looks from the west looking towards the east. And I'm going to bring the drone up higher and give you a good overall view of how the south end is continuing to develop. And by comparing this to the rest of the building, this gives you a good idea of once this is completed, how the building will look and how much longer it will be. And of course, all of this is going to be under one contiguous roof. So it will look like it's all part of the same structure, even though there's individual components that are being built underneath that roof section. Stop the drone here and turn back so you can get a good view of the tanks on the uh, right hand side and the steel structure and that whole south end looking from the east to the west and then across the highway where you can see that boring company operation and that new large end of line facility. As I turn back towards the multi-level parking garage we have a few developments today that I want to show you. First of all, we can see that another large section of concrete has been poured on this roof section, and now they're starting down into the ramp section for the vehicles that will come up and go down um, to get to their parking spots. And you can get a good view of that. Some of the rebar mesh that's uh, still 
waiting for it to be uh, applied and then more of the concrete. And again, they're gonna do that on every single floor and that will help tie the entire structure together. We also see at the ground level here, two more sections have uh, proceeded towards the east. And in fact, the uh, other small walls on the ground where we'll see the ramps for the vehicles, uh, the structure has now reached that point in the construction site. On the right, we can see the extension of Robotic Avenue. And then as I turn back, we can get a good view of just how much larger this facility has become, how it continues to march its way towards the east. And as I zoom in, a good view, uh, some more of the activity, how this looks uh, with some of the new columns that are being installed or prepared to be installed. We see some beams and the double T panels on the ground uh, waiting for their turn for installation. But this uh, site continues to grow probably uh, maybe a, a section or two every day. Uh, so it's really moving along quickly. As I go between the cranes, I'll give you one more look down at the concrete pour that is going on in the central section here with the two ramps and just how this entire part of the structure looks. I'm going to fly up over the power lines and then we'll go to the roof section. I want to show you uh, what's going on here on the roof of the body and white structure. This is that large section that uh, has had the roof weatherproof membrane insulation and the roof decking removed. We see the uh, bright white curb that has been installed around the open section. And uh, I'm going to see if the lighting will work for us. I'll look down into this section and we'll see the Evapco chiller units. There are six of them on this side, four on the other side, so a total of 10. We see large manifolds, uh, pumps, uh, some filtration units, and some other items that have been installed here, particularly those three yellow items. And then here's those uh, four Evapco units. Once this is completed, it'll look like the one we see at the top of the screen. And all of those ventilation ducts are currently stored on the west side material staging location. And they should be moved over here fairly soon as this section looks to be close to being ready for those to be installed. I'm gonna fly back over the power lines just to give you a slightly different view of that multi-level parking garage from this vantage point. On the ground next to the wall, we saw a lot of uh, electrical conduit being installed in my previous video, and it looks like some more earthwork is going on. As we approach the temporary uh, testing and calibration lot, uh, we see at the bottom of the screen excavation work near to that entrance location. We see a lot less vehicles here today. Uh, probably because they've adjusted the production uh, to take advantage of that new outbound lot that uh, we talked about in the intro. And uh, the helicopter pad is still here. That'll be permanent. But I think once they're done, they will turn this entire section into parking as parking seems to be a limiting issue right now because of the number of employees that they continue to hire in. This is a good view of the extension of Robotic Avenue and uh, they're working on both lanes and that median, and eventually it will connect to the road just to the right of the uh, temporary outbound lot. And speaking of which, this is a good view of just how empty this lot is now. There's virtually no vehicles. The last of them are being picked up on the trucks. The uh, trailers that have been used for offices on the right and on the left are all being prepared for uh, movement away. And it would not surprise me if very soon we see this section reconfigured as just regular parking again. A good view of the last truck with uh, several Model Ys and a Cybertruck getting ready to park this uh, site. And of course, the uh, old uh, trailer that was used for offices for the outbound lot. So uh, just a nice update to see this uh, change. Uh, this is a I think a great milestone because it shows that Giga Texas's uh, production is starting to uh, resemble what its final outlook will be and some of the new facilities put into place. Uh, we do see uh, several Cybertrucks uh, lining up here for supercharging. Another one just arrived on the right-hand side of the screen and uh, they're just sort of being queued up here using the superchargers until that new 64 supercharger plus perhaps more on that west side is ready to go.
as I zoom in here next to the secondary main entrance, a couple of things that I want to show you. The concrete apron work is continuing on the left-hand side of the screen, plus the enclosures are getting ready for installation on those receiving doors. Take a look at all of the Cybertruck castings that are being stored even this far south on the east side of the building. And there's even more here in this dirt section waiting for that uh, concrete apron to be finished. And of course, the enclosures for those receiving doors have been added as well. More of the castings against the wall here. And then this is the section where the uh, conduit, the electronic cables, and that new uh, uh, concrete section next to the wall have all been finished. And then this is the work to widen this uh, berm and the apron section. We see those corrugated steel pipes that's part of a water management system getting ready for installation around this area. We see the rebar, the form work, and we also see this uh, kind of a form or a structure over that rebar section. I think it's called a screed and it's a laser screed and this helps to level off the uh, concrete once it is poured and that will roll along that uh, section as that concrete is poured. So pretty cool. I'll give you a closer view of that here in a second. But I also wanted to show you some work here. Looks like they are saw cutting some of the concrete around where these castings are and that wall. Of course more of the castings as well and as I bring the drone down even lower we see a good view of the formwork, the rebar work, how this section is uh, starting to take shape. And as I mentioned, uh, we see that uh, it looks like a yellow kind of a uh, form structure that straddles over this section. And I believe that's a uh, laser screed section or uh, machine. And that will help to make sure that the concrete is leveled in this particular area. So pretty neat to see. And in addition to all of that, look at all of the castings uh, again, we've seen them all along the east side, now on the northeast side, and then there's even more on the north side of paint. And uh, this is definitely a huge uptick in the amount of uh, castings. So I think that this may tell us something about the production rate for the cyber trucks, and I think that's a positive sign. As we continue to fly along the north end, we see the work to uh, expand the production lines for the 4680 continues. Some of the uh, materials that have been del delivered, we see the cranes and also the two um, elevator systems next to those platforms, this new temporary platform. And almost all of the steel items we saw here in my previous video have been moved in, and that included some bridge crane rails as well. As I wrap around the northwest corner of the building, I wanted to fly down here shortly uh, to give you a view of this uh, ramp. It looks like uh, continued demolition work is underway now. It's been a while since we've seen the activity here, but they've uh, removed one of the two remaining wall sections that are right up next to the opening. And it looks like they are also breaking up some additional concrete around this particular section. And uh, again, I'm not sure what the plan is here, but this was one of the very first concrete structures added to the west side of the building, and now it's uh, being demolished. As we come up onto the roof, I wanna just give you a good view of this section that is still under uh, the bricks and we'll have more repair work done to uh, make sure that that weatherproof membrane is securely fashioned to the roof and prevent some of the leaks and it flapping in the wind. As we get ready to cross over Tesla Road, let's take a look at what's going on at the mega packs and also the electrical switch yards today. <music> see some crews at the south end of the mega pack uh, look like they were doing some testing but uh, if I zoom in here we see that those disconnect uh, levers those kind of the black uh, levers in the middle of the screen have still not been connected so the mega pack itself is not getting electrical power although we do see these double-ended breakers in the middle of the screen they are connected so there is power of some sort reaching portions of this uh, site but not the mega packs themselves. 
And there's a good view of the Megapack site. And as I pan the drone up, the relation of the factory to this site. And then I'm going to fly up over the power lines and show you the current development of the disassembly of the um, temporary electrical switch yard. Uh, it looks like some fencing has been removed on the right-hand side. It's more open between the control trailers, that uh, underground vault, and the temporary switchyard. The temporary switchyard itself has had one of the two A-frames removed. More of that uh, gravel mix that uh, is used for grounding is being uh, scraped up and removed. Uh, the cable tray trench underneath that white truck in the right-hand side of the screen has been removed, and it looks like preparation work for the uh, second A-frame is underway for it to be removed. We also see some of the Fencing now being removed next to that worker that just opened up that gate. And as I fly it backwards a little, we can see some of the materials that have been removed, stored here on the south end, and those are getting ready for transport off-site. And I would say let's give it another week to 10 days, and that temporary uh, switchyard will be completely removed. And some people have asked where that would be used. It's not Tesla property. It belongs to LCRA, which is the Lower Colorado River Authority. And I suspect that those will be used elsewhere around the region. As we fly up over the Martin Marietta batch plant, this is a good view of the west side and north side of the dye shop and battery cathode plant. And uh, still some water on that west side of the dye shop. And uh, they need to uh, finish up the stormwater pipe so that they can mitigate that. They also need to finish uh, with the preparation of this side so they can put asphalt around and that will help control a lot more of the mud in this part of the site. As I fly up over the dye shop roof section, I'll give you a good view down at the alleyway and some of the work that is going on here with uh, some of the pipes and the tanks and vaporizers. We see this section at the bottom uh, center that is still waiting for final work and then concrete to be poured. There's a good view of some of the manifolds next to these stainless steel tanks and, of course, the pipes, heat exchangers, and pumps on the roof section and the, the uh, Evapco fans that are operational as well. As we continue to fly to the north, uh, we can see next to the building that uh, asphalt that was recently done, uh, but uh, still looks like there's some work to be done to uh, finalize uh, next to this concrete uh, underground uh, um, drainage trench and uh, in addition to that on the north end this is the lift station last time we saw uh, workers connecting all of the uh, electrical connections uh, to those three boxes and those look like they are completed and it is still using a generator right now to provide power for this system to be operational and we can see the manhole cover is open so there's most likely some additional work being done on the inside right now Here's a good view of the north end of the battery cathode plant itself, the five receiving doors and that new uh, concrete uh, section just to the north of those doors. And we also see some of the asphalt on both sides now of that uh, cathode plant. As I pull up further to the northeast, I just wanted to give you a quick view of the materials and how this section looks. It, uh, is slowly having less and less materials in this particular part of the site. Here we see where the expansion for some of the trailers and equipment has uh, uh, helped to relocate much of this from the east side of the cathode plant itself. The cell test and recycle lab here, this steel structure uh, looks like it's busy. We also see some of the trailers uh, around here, plus some of the uh, connexes that have equipment and also that kind of a teal covered uh, uh, workshop. We fly over the wade pit that has water from the rains. We see where the asphalt has been applied the full length on this side of the cathode plant and more area is ready for additional paving soon. And as I uh, continue to maneuver around here, we'll fly over the crash test facility and I'll look down. I wanted to show you the progress on this uh, slab with the rebar for what looks to be almost like a bath type structure. I am not sure exactly what this is, but there have been some people speculating that maybe this is a bath for vehicles in case there's a problem with uh, uh, 
the crash testing that happens right inside that uh, rounded top on the right hand side. So I don't know if that is in fact the case, uh, but uh, we'll continue to monitor and we'll see what it looks like as more of it is constructed. Here's a really good view of the east side and how it looks today. And I'm gonna pan back towards the west slightly and show you the work that is continuing here to extend Tesla Road all the way through this section. And then of course there will be branches off to go through the alleyway of the uh, dye shop and uh, the battery cathode plant and further to the east. So there you go, a good view of Giga Texas here on this Monday, 12 February. I hope you enjoyed what we were able to see and thank you very much for your support. Take care.